Hey, what's happening guys? Today I have a quick unboxing video for you and a brief overview of the FLIR 1 thermal imaging camera for the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 5S. So without further ado, let me jump right into this guy here. Got a couple of uh, little adhesive stickers here. The sides. And it looks like it is in a little magnetic box here. Got the little back side of the packaging here, giving you a overlay. You're gonna get that close to a deer with this camera. It makes you an instant ninja. So make sure you go pick one of these up. All right. So inside the packaging here, you have a basic layout of the camera, the thermal camera, visible camera, the power status indicator. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and do note that this is a uh, battery too. So uh, looks like it comes with the case, slim case, USB cable, and headphone extender. So let's pop this dude out here. Take this guy out here like a bull in a china shop. Have the manual and everything. Whoops. The uh, micro USB cable and the audio extender. Now, the one thing you'll note uh, in this guy is it does not have a USB charger in it, so uh, don't be disappointed whenever you, you pay the price for one of these dudes. Now keep in mind the barrier for entry for a thermal camera is extremely expensive. So even though this is a pricey iPhone case, it's actually a really inexpensive thermal imaging camera. So uh, first impressions of this guy is it's super lightweight. You would not believe that this is a thermal camera. This is actually as light as just about any other iPhone case out there. I'd actually say, I maybe even argue, I'm speculating now, but I'd say it's it's on par with the same weight as an OtterBox case or lighter. I don't know, um, but it is fairly light. It's a little bulky, but what do you expect? There's a camera built into this. So looks like it's two components. So you have a slimline case here that acts as a protective cover for your, your iPhone case, uh, your iPhone here. I generally don't like hard plastic cases because they slide around. Uh, like some of the OtterBox cases, you, know, you, you, you buy one of them, you put it inside and it just over six months or even a week it'll slide around in the plastic and it'll end up scratching it up. I generally like to get the dual layer ones with like the silicone uh, or silicate based uh, gel on the inside, soft layer, and then you have the hard uh, plastic outer shell and everything. But uh, this actually fits it fairly tight, so it doesn't seem like it's going to slide around in there and scratch it up. Uh, it has a little bit of an offset right here so that you can take and put it onto your, your uh, camera body here. Um, and you do have this audio extension here, so if you want to put your microphone and everything, or your, if you want to put your headset in for that. So, went ahead and downloaded the FLIR 1 app for this guy here. Um, to calibrate your camera and everything. When you launch the program, it'll give you a basic overview of how to install the, the case onto it and everything to get your camera on. You just flip it down like that. Once it is on or in the on position, you're gonna take and you're gonna wanna calibrate it. When it's flashing green like that, you take and hold this down. And you're good to go. So take, put my hand out onto the table here, you can see where it was resting. And uh, there's a few different modes that you can use for this. You have the rainbow mode, you have contrast, arctic, coldest, hottest, iron, gray, and back to rainbow again. Now you can switch in between camera mode and uh, video mode. I found that if you record, contrary to what you would normally do, uh, recording in portrait mode is better than recording in landscape mode. 
Now a reason for this, I have no clue, but I found that there's a rolling shutter effect whenever you're in landscape mode versus portrait. And you seem to get a little bit more real estate uh, with the camera. It looks like it's just cropping in when it goes portrait. Now I, I tried the same trick where you, know, you, you start recording um, in the mode, you start recording in landscape mode, and then you can switch to uh, portrait. It still, it still does that um, camera swap, whereas if you're in the normal camera mode on the iPhone, it, it generally stays with the first setting in which you hit record, so. Yeah, I mean, that's the basic overview for it. It stores everything onto your camera roll. I'll do a more thorough test after we do the drop tests and the slow motion torture tests and all that good stuff. So that's pretty much it for the general overview here. Um, I'll do a more thorough review showing you some of the more quirks, some of the good stuff about it and everything. But basic consensus for this is it's a fairly inexpensive way to get a thermal camera that does some pretty cool stuff. Um, barrier for entry for any thermal camera is extremely expensive. Uh, most people wouldn't want to justify the cost of getting one just to play around with. But for an iPhone camera case, this isn't that bad. I mean. It's a, a cool little thing that you could take and if you're into the social media world of posting stuff all the time to Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, that might be a cool little feature to have. Um, honestly, I'm not gonna hate on it. Uh, it's a super lightweight uh, camera case here. I'm gonna reserve judgment until I've actually been able to use it for a week or so and then we'll do the slow-mo torture test and all that other stuff, the drop test and water and see how all that stuff holds up and then we'll put it up to you guys, see what you think. So until next time, we'll see you guys soon.